Hey there class, welcome back. A little mini lecture on heuristics and then we're going to get into our longer segment on intelligence. So a heuristic is a mental shortcut. Um, it is a quick and dirty little tool that we use to come to um, an understanding, a decision, an action quickly. Here's the thing guys, um, our brains use so much of our energy that, um, and they're such energy hogs and not now, but historically speaking, we didn't have a lot of energy available to us because it was hard to find things to eat. It was hard to kill things. Of course, now we live in a food rich environment, but um, we are still wired up for famine. And so we um, have a lot of mental shortcuts that were just kind of hardwired into us. And so heuristics are mental shortcuts and the purpose of them is to make a quicker decision. So I want to share with you two different heuristics that I want you to be familiar with. The first one is called the availability heuristic, and the second one is the representativeness heuristic. Availability is, I want you to think of this as whatever you can easily think of. So if I say to you, um, you know, uh, how likely is it that your uh, daughter is going to get kidnapped? Um, you probably are going to overestimate that because we tend to hear stories about that. It tends to make the news and it's very impactful. And so we can easily think of it. And so we're tend gonna probably tend to overestimate the likelihood of that happening. Representativeness heuristic um, is based on prototypes and stereotypes. Instead of what we can easily think of, it's does that match what I think of? Um, so if you hear about um, somebody who is, uh, um, uh, gorgeous and fit and beautiful, you might think, oh, they're probably a social media influencer. But of course, the problem here is that most people aren't social media influencers. And so we tend to kind of ignore base rates. So that's just a brief introduction. I'm going to kind of um, give you a little, flesh these ideas out a little bit more. So um, availability heuristic is where we're estimating the probability of events. Um, these are decisions involving uncertainty. So we judge the probability of an event by how easily we can recall previous occurrences of the event. So people will tend to overestimate deaths from natural disasters because disasters are shown on TV and that's very impactful. Most people will underestimate deaths from asthma because those deaths don't make the local news. Um, but there's actually quite a bit um, of, of deaths actually from asthma or things like cystic fibrosis, for example. The less accurately our memory of an event reflects the actual frequency of the event, the less accurate our estimate will be. So um, in the case of asthma, um, our memory does not jive with the actual frequency of people dying from asthma. And so our guess will, will be pretty inaccurate. So people will tend to say, oh yes, you know, you could really get um, uh, killed by a shark if you go swimming down in Corpus Christi uh, because shark attacks are always reported and they're very, very memorable because they're so horrifying. Um, and uh, I assume we've all seen the movie Jaws, <laughs> maybe not anymore. Um, so many people will overestimate their likelihood of, of um, um, getting attacked by a shark down in Corpus. Okay, so um, availability heuristic. You estimate the likelihood of something happening based on how easily you can remember something like that happening. So as an example, maybe I keep my kid indoors because I'm afraid of kidnapping because I've heard a lot of media coverage of kidnappings, but actually kidnappings are really relatively rare. But I, I got to tell you, I'm still terrified. <laughs> so um, in class, what I like to do is rank order the causes of death uh, from 1 to 15 um, on the following slide. Now, um, I will say this is pre-COVID. Uh, COVID kind of screwed everything up as far as this goes. It used to be fairly um, relatively stable. So let's say this is 2017 data. So um, I won't I won't uh, ask you to like really do it, but maybe think about what would you put as the top three and what would you put as the bottom three? So pause your video and give that a little bit of thought. Now you know what we're talking about, right? You know we're talking about availability heuristic. You know that I'm making the argument that if we can easily think of it, we're going to overestimate its likelihood. And so if you use that, you may not have gotten this as wrong as you might have otherwise. 
Um, so here is the actual 2017 leading causes of death. Heart disease, cancer, and accidents are highest. Suicide is down here. Homicide is 15. Oftentimes people will put homicide up here uh, because we watch TV shows and movies and it's always reported on the news. Um, people tend not to put chronic lower respiratory diseases like asthma and cystic fibrosis as high as number four because those are not reported uh, very widely at all. So um, there's our example of that. So let's now think about our second heuristic. This is the representativeness heuristic. This is the likelihood of an event is estimated by comparing how similar it is to a prototype. Now you'll remember prototype. A prototype is the best example of something. Um, it's the best exemplar. So I might say to you, well, a handsome, well-dressed man is articulate and charming. And so then we might assume that he is wealthy and educated because our prototype of a wealthy, educated man is that he's also articulate and charming. But it turns out, in fact, he's really a swindler. So um, in what I tend to do in, in class, and, and you can just think about this on your own, is, is think about, okay, who is Maria? If I give you this description of Maria, if I say she is perceptive, sensitive and introspective. She's very articulate. She married, measures her words carefully. Once she's certain she knows what she wants to say, she expresses herself easily and confidently. She has a strong preference for working alone. Is it more likely that Maria is a successful fiction writer or that Maria is a registered nurse? Now, I would Based on 10 years of teaching experience, I would bet you money that most of you are thinking she's a successful fiction writer because that matches your prototype of a successful fiction writer. It matches your stereotype of a writer. But what we are failing to do here is think about base rates. What are the base rates of successful fiction writers in the United States? Low, right? Not many people can do that. Um, what's the base rate of nurses? Huge, right? Huge. Um, there's nothing in this description that precludes her being a nurse. So if we just take into account base rates, it's almost certain that she's more likely to be a nurse than to be a successful fiction writer, because this could certainly describe a nurse or a writer, but there's way, way more nurses than writers, and so probably she's a nurse but we tend to ignore the base rate and just say, well, is that what I think of as a writer? Okay, so most people guess fiction writer, but we fail to consider variations from the prototype, and we fail to consider the approximate number of prototypes that exist. All right, so heuristics, let's wrap a little bow on this. They're mental shortcuts, and why do we make mental shortcuts? Because our brains are expensive. Uh, they require a lot of energy, and if we can simplify anything, we will. So availability is whatever you can easily think of, a shark attack, a kidnapping. Um, lately my thing is brain-eating amoebas. I seem to see stories pretty regularly about people getting brain-eating amoebas. The last one was from doing a nasal wash with tap water. I also saw one where somebody got it from eye drops terrifying. <laughs> now the thing is, is I'm sure that's actually very, very unlikely to happen to anybody, but I am now a little bit worried about it, to be honest. Um, representativeness heuristic, prototypes, and stereotypes. So um, if somebody says to me, um, oh, you know, we're going to have a new dean, um, on the campus, I might conjure up my prototype or stereotype, sort of a, a, a bookish uh, person um, uh, as the dean, but who knows if that's really what it is. We, we will tend to say somebody um, uh, is, um, is a particular type of person because we're failing to um, take into account base rates. Okay, so um, 
why don't you think about this um, at dinner tonight? Go tell whoever you're having dinner with a real life example of the availability heuristic and the representativeness heuristic. See if you can apply it to your real life. That'll help you on the test. All right. Uh, thank you very much. I'll see you in our last and final video for the thinking and intelligence chapter.